My stomach is killing me. Why does my heart have to burn after I eat spicy food? I have no idea where my liver is. Have you ever wondered where things are located in the human body and what functions they perform? Mom, your hands on your intestines, not your stomach. And Whitney, it's not your heart that causes indigestion, it's your esophagus. And Lauren, your liver is in the upper right hand abdominal cavity above the stomach and below the diaphragm. <laughs> Are you telling me that none of you know your internal anatomy? Whitney, where's your spleen? A spleen? I think I've heard of it, but I don't know. I put my hand over my heart when I do the pledge, so my heart's there. Let's go to my lab. Let's start with the skeletal system, the framework of the body. I enable movement, protect the vital organs, and inside of some of my bones, I produce blood cells and store fat and minerals, and I scare people on Halloween. The nervous system includes the brain, spinal cord, and nerves that travel all the way out to your fingers and toes. The nervous system is the command center. Homeostasis is number one, but I also control cognition, reflexes, memory, learning, speech, hearing, and movement. I control and communicate information throughout the body. I'm kind of important around here, you know. The cells that send and receive messages are called neurons. They have a cell body called a soma that has dendrites and a long axon where the message that we call an action potential will travel until it reaches a terminal. Where to connect, you have a synapse, where neurotransmitters will cross a gap and send the message from one to the next neuron. Next is the respiratory system. You have a nose, nasal cavity, epiglottis, pharynx, which is your throat that is shared with the digestive system, and a windpipe, also called the trachea, that branches out into smaller tubes all the way down to the tiny alveoli that interfaces with the blood vessels for gas exchange. A thin skeletal muscle called the diaphragm is there to alter the volume of the lungs to take in and push out air. Yes, the respiratory system is rather important. <laughs> we take in the oxygen for the body, we get rid of the carbon dioxide, and we're in charge of sound production, olfaction, which is your sense of smell, and acid-base balance, which is kind of important. We want to keep that at 7.35 to 4.5 in the blood. We help do that. We also regulate blood pressure in volume and, oh, we get rid of toxins. That sounds like you're fixing your own problem. You breathe in the toxins in the first place. So I don't think that we can consider that one of your functions when you caused it in the first place. Brain, no need to get catty. The circulatory system is controlled by the heart, and like the nervous system, it branches out to your fingertips and toes. You have arteries with oxygen-carrying blood, pictured in red, and veins which have dropped off the oxygen at the tissues, and those are pictured in blue, which run alongside each other. This is a continuous loop structure going to and from the heart. The cardiovascular system is a distribution center for the body. We are responsible for transporting nutrients, gases, waste, and signals to where they need to be. We are also very important with thermal regulation. Now, the muscular system, yeah, they might contract and produce the heat, but we are the ones that will distribute that heat as evenly as we can. And the blood, well, we have clotting. We will, in the case of an injury, we prevent that blood loss. And also, the immune cells use this as a super highway. Very important. The digestive and excretory system is primarily a long tube from the mouth to the anus. But we call things differently along the way as the function changes. It starts with the mouth and associated salivary glands. Then we have the throat 
and then a tube called the esophagus. The stomach is next, the small intestine, the large intestine, the rectum, and then the anus. The liver, gallbladder, and pancreas are associated organs that all aid digestion. They're connected via tubes called ducts to the small intestine where most digestion will take place. All of us work together to break down and absorb nutrients that the mouth noms or sends down via ingestion. The salivary glands are gonna start working in the mouth to break down starches. You can get a saltine cracker, chew it up for a while. It's gonna eventually turn sweet because it's breaking down to glucose. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so when we swallow, we have this little flap that will protect our windpipe, also known as our trachea. This prevents the food from going in the lungs. So, then it goes into the esophagus, which is a long muscular tube. It has smooth muscle that will contract against each other and cause wave-like contractions. This is called peristalsis. Now, the esophagus will send the food to me. Now, I have mucus cells that are going to protect me. They produce a protective layer for my epithelium. Then I have parietal cells that will secrete an acid that is going to perform some chemical digestion. It also will kill some bad bacteria, but not all of them. Some bad guys might get through. So I have the acid, the pepsin, and um, some lipase that I can secrete as well. And then my muscles are going to churn. And this is called mechanical digestion. And this is also breaking down the food. Then when we're done, we're going to send the food to the small intestine. Well, you didn't mention your two gateways, stomach. My daughter, Whitney, mentioned having heartburn earlier. It's not from her heart. The stomach has two sphincters that allow for the passage of materials. The one between the esophagus and the stomach is called the cardiac sphincter because it's right in front of the heart. So when the sphincter accidentally lets some acidic stomach juice or acid, hydrochloric acid, float up into the esophagus, you feel a burning sensation. That is because the lining of the esophagus isn't specialized to handle the stomach acid, like the stomach has the protection. Okay, so stomach produces chyme, which is basically your food all liquefied and stuff. And it will pass through the lower pyloric sphincter of the stomach into the small intestine. And we have some enzymes there to start digesting, but we also will get some help from the liver and the pancreas via the common bile duct that just dumps right into the small intestine. So we have all of these enzymes that are just chopping up the larger molecules into ones that can be absorbed. So we have absorption occurring in the small intestine. And these macronutrients, the carbs, lipids, uh, proteins, and minerals, and vitamins will pass through into the bloodstream. My friends and I, we're called the gut microbiome or intestinal flora. And what we do is that we're going to break down the dietary fiber that you consume, which will help you maintain your weight and we lower the chance of cancers and heart disease and we also communicate with your immune cells so if you need to fight some bad guys and um, we also run security we won't let the bad guys take over and also new research has shown that we might play a role in maintaining your overall health of your heart and brain and we can also help to control blood sugar <laughs> i filter blood I regulate chemical levels, I remove toxins, and I create a chemical, it's called bile. It emulsifies fats that are consumed by my human. And um, my friend, the gallbladder, will help store my excess. Yeah, that's right. And either way, we send it via a small muscular tube called the common bile duct to the small intestine. I have a duct that secretes my digestive enzymes into the common bile duct. I love to do my part for digestion. Oh, I didn't know you'd be here. I just need to borrow something. I 
sounds what I needed. Thank you. See you later. Yeah, just come on in and take what you need, neighbor. The urinary system has two kidneys that are situated in the posterior portion of the body cavity on either side of the spinal cord. They're connected to the urinary bladder via ureters, and from the bladder is the urethra and out the body. I felt the blood, and I helped to balance chemicals, like electrolytes. I release hormones to control blood pressure and red blood cell production. Here are my functions. I control acid-base balance. The blood should be 7.35 to 7.45 pH. I'll secrete acid or base when it's needed. I also control water balance by regulating the volume of urine that I produce. I also maintain electrolyte balance. Since I filter the blood, I have control of what goes and stays. Sodium and phosphate are regulated here. I remove toxins. I remove soluble waste. And when I'm not functioning properly, these wastes will increase in the blood. I also control blood pressure. We produce an enzyme called renin. This converts angiotensinogen that's produced in the liver to angiotensin 1, which in the lungs will convert to angiotensin 2. This chemical will constrict blood vessels and increase blood pressure. And on the other hand, when the blood pressure is too high, we'll make more urine to reduce the blood volume. We produce erythropoietin hormone, which signals to produce more red blood cells erythrocytes that transport oxygen to the tissues. We activate vitamin D to keep the bones healthy. We transform calcifidiol into calcitriol, which is active vitamin D, which will circulate in the blood and regulate calcium and phosphate balance in the body, which are necessary for healthy bones. I filter and send the filtrate to the ureters. And I store the urine. When you're ready, we'll pass it out through a tube called the urethra. The endocrine system has multiple organs that work in dual systems, such as the brain's hypothalamus and pituitary and pineal glands, the thyroid, the parathyroid glands, pancreas, the thymus, the adrenal glands that sit on top of the kidneys, ovaries in females, and testes in males. Hi, I'm the spleen, and the lymphatic system as a whole has the function to store blood, I mean, I do that, and filter blood and remove, like, dead blood cells. And we make immune cells, like lymphocytes and monocytes and antibody-producing cells called plasma cells. And we also absorb fats and we'll transport them to the circulatory system. And um, we're also responsible for maintaining water balance in the body. So we remove excess fluids from the tissues and put it back into the circulatory system. Then we have the reproductive systems, which differ via male and female. The females have two ovaries connected via fallopian tubes to a uterus cervix, and then vagina that opens to the outside. The male body has testes connected via sperm ducts to the prostate gland, the urethra, which is a tube through the penis to the outside. The function of the reproductive system is to ensure the survival of the species. The muscular system is divided into three types. We have cardiac or heart muscle, smooth muscle, like what's in the digestive tract, bladder, blood vessels. Then we have the skeletal muscle, which is attached to the skeleton with tendons. The function of the muscular system is to move us around, help us breathe, make us stable, aid circulation, digestion, urination, childbirth, vision, organ protection, and temperature regulation. The final organ system is the skin, which is an exterior wrap of the body. It includes the hair, nails, some energy storage, and associated oil and sweat glands. It's considered to be the biggest organ of the body, and is referred to as the integumentary system. The function is to protect us by giving us a mechanical barrier against UV, germs, and heat. 
The skin helps us regulate body temperature with our sweat glands and enables us to sense the world around us with nerve endings. So we've covered the organ systems as a big picture. We'll get to discussions of each individually later. For now, let's check back on my family and see what's going on. All I'm asking for is a simple cheek cell sample. Just swab your cheek and I'll be on my way. It's not like I'm trying to take a stem cell sample from your bone marrow. Mom, I'm so glad you're here. Make our new neighbor go away. Here, I'll just do it so you go on. I appreciate it. With this, I plan to advance the science of humankind. You can thank me later. Bum bum bip bop, what is this? Mama Mitmop, you dare go into my sleep chamber where I was hiding that virus. I need that for an experiment in my laboratory. You will not be doing hybridization experiments in your laboratory with an earthling virus. What are you with those things? You are horrible. What exactly just happened? Did she just take that annoying virus and flick it back on this patio? Unfortunately, yes. Well, I'll be. I hope you enjoyed the fourth episode of Dr. Bond's World. Join us next time for To Nom or Not To Nom. We will discuss what makes up a healthy diet in 2022, how food is broken down for energy, and what functions the organ systems perform for energy production. We will see how Whitney's doing with her new friend, Gina Germ. Thanks, Lauren. And Bon Bon Bip Bob continues to work on her master plan behind Mama Mip Mop's back. Will she divulge what she's doing? Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss an episode. The episodes are released every Thursday at 4 p.m. Central.